Hello everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel and welcome to this week's Will I Buy It video, the weekly video series on my channel inspired by Samantha March in which we talk about new makeup releases and whether or not I want them and why. In today's video we have quite a few um, interesting releases to talk about. I have a lot of indie brands that I'm really interested in sharing with you. I will mention, I feel like I have to say this a lot, but I am on a no buy as of now. That means that I I am pledging to not buy any more makeup for an unspecified period of time. This is of course made even more difficult and you will see um, in a bit by some of the most amazing releases that I have seen in quite a while that I will be showing you guys in this video today. And in addition to that we do have some things to roast so this is going to be like a fun video of polar opposites as well. So if you're interested in seeing any of that, then of course keep on watching. The first brand that I want to mention is by the name of Bombshell Cosmetica. This is an indie brand and for this release they're collaborating with Mary Jane.Beauty and they're releasing a Mystic Unicorn palette. Now, I have spoken on many occasions about how whenever brands release, um, any brand, indie or not, release palettes that have a rainbow color story, I get a little bit bored. Because for me, what classifies as a rainbow color story is a colorful palette with little to no rhyme or reason in which um, it appears that the brand um, owner or just the designer or whoever did the actual um, design of the palette just wanted to release a colorful palette but the color story was non-existent you know because I want to see a certain theme whenever it comes to colorful palettes I want to see a certain uh, similarity between the shades I want to see different gradients of colors and I also want to see um, I want to be able to see ways to create looks within a palette so this, in my mind, is a great play on the unicorn theme. I think that something that really is popular right now is, of course, the whole unicorn trend, and I do appreciate how they stuck with the unicorn trend. However, they decided to use a color story that was, in my mind, quite cohesive. You have your cool tones, and you have some purples, and then you have some highlight shades as well, but on the whole, this is not necessarily a rainbow palette you would expect from a unicorn theme. This palette does have a certain color story to it. it has as a theme, I like it. Um, I really do. And I feel like if I wasn't on my no buy, I would consider purchasing this um, because I really do like the shades a lot. And I feel like Honestly, uh, we could do an entire video just talking about the different cool tone palettes that have been coming out, comparing and contrasting color stories, because there have been a ton of cool tone palettes on the market. I don't know about you, but I love cool tones, so that, of course, is good news in my opinion. We have another indie brand to talk about today as well. This is from the brand Moonpie underscore UK, and these palettes have already launched. There are four different palettes, and they feature a palette called Purple Rain, Tequila Sunrise, Blue Lagoon, and Sour Apple. Each one of these palettes has a certain color theme to it, such as purple, I would say neutral, warm, brown colors, blue, and green. And these are going to be, uh, or these are, 14 pounds, 50 pence each. Now, I did think whenever I saw this for the first time, I thought that this was very similar in concept to what ColourPop has been doing with their nine pan monochromatic themed um, eyeshadow palettes that have been very popular on the internet lately. I felt like this was very similar to those palettes in theme. However, I did um, sort of I did notice how these palettes do contain far more shades than um, nine pans. And I think that if you're somebody who is new to colorful makeup, if you don't necessarily have a very large collection of colorful eyeshadows, for instance, and you want to delve into a specific color family, but you feel like um, a nine pan palette will leave you lacking, this might be a good option for you. For instance, I think that a lot of people when they first delve into a, a colorful sort of like way of doing makeup, a lot of people really like using Using purples and one of these palettes is a purple palette and I feel like there are some really beautiful shades in here that would be ideal for somebody who is willing to try them out so that's um 
that's the purpose that I see for a launch such as this. I don't think that I necessarily want to buy this because none of these palettes really hold any kind of appeal for me. I like them, but I don't love them. So I do feel like this holds a certain appeal to a certain type of person, but I'm already a person who has a rather substantial collection of colorful shadows, so I don't necessarily need such a large selection of any one color. I prefer to have my uh, new newer palettes come in a rather edited format. I don't like to have as much product at once whenever it comes to palettes these days. And then moving on, I actually have a fantastic example of what I would classify as a rainbow palette. This is from the brand The Cosmetic Apex, and they are launching these three new eyeshadow palettes. They have one called Vertex, Climax, and then the last one is called Pinnacle. Now, when I first laid eyes on this collection, I thought that they, uh, the palettes looked very similar. Of course, Climax is a palette consisting of chiefly neutrals with a, like a very beautiful row of fiery warm tone shades, but Vertex and Pinnacle, for instance, are very similar, and I actually consider these palettes to be rainbow palettes because, yes, you do have a few gradients, but on the whole, the color story, it kind of looks all over the place. Um, I feel like at this point, um, the theme... I don't see any kind of theme that's I don't see any theme that's immediately obvious to me and I honestly feel like they could have just edited down the colors a little bit more and maybe combined Vertex and Pinnacle to create one palette and then just left Climax the way it was because Climax I mean that I would would admit is a little bit of an awkward looking color story but I do think it works because I think that if you're somebody who loves neutrals a great way to add a little bit more to inject a little bit more of color into your um, makeup looks is simply by using some reds, yellows, oranges, because those colors I think are very flattering on a variety of people, especially when you inject them and I would say mix them up with neutral shades. Next up, let's talk about a brand that you guys are probably all very familiar with, Sigma. Now, Sigma is launching an Enchanted eyeshadow palette, that is the name, Enchanted, and I mean, I was quite intrigued by the packaging until I literally like just like saw the inside and I was like eh I mean it's just okay they have a lot of colors in here and you can get this palette for $49 and included in the palette is a dual ended brush I'm just not into the, this color story these colors are being advertised as buildable does that mean that they're sheer? I, I don't know. But like the swatches do look pretty decent and I will say that in the pan when I first saw this palette a few of the colors looked very similar, but in the swatches, if you look at the swatches, they do look quite different, which is nice. Do I want this palette? No. Are these colors that appeal to me as a person, as a person who loves makeup? No. So yes, this is a pass. However, let's talk about this brand, Kaleidos Makeup. <sighs> okay. This is actually one of the things, this is actually one of the brands that I've sort of had my eye on for a little bit and I feel like when I'm when I'm done with my no buy, I feel like I will go ham because I love what people have been saying about these palettes. Now this is Kaleidos Makeup and they are, have been launching these palettes so they have uh, really just like edited down and these are really curated uh, palettes and the packaging looks absolutely stellar but these are six pan eyeshadow palettes and they each have like a particular theme to them and right now they're launching two very colorful versions of those six pan palettes that they've been launching. So this is going to be the Futurism 4 which is a very very neon palette and then if, and then the Futurism 5 palette which is described as an electro turquoise palette. Now I believe I was watching Julia Mazzucato. I absolutely love her channel. If you don't already watch her you definitely should. I was watching her and she actually did compare the quality of these shadows to that of Pat McGrath and if that is true I'm like down. But yeah these are two palettes that I really really want from Kaleidos. I, I couldn't just pick one, I just want both of them, honestly, if I'm being honest with you guys. I want both, I don't care, I just want both, and I believe that these are about $24 each. So not bad, actually. Um, for six pans, I wouldn't say it's like an affordable price, but it's definitely more affordable than 
other brands and I think that this like entire aesthetic of this brand is so fascinating. Okay so let's talk about Kylie Cosmetics. She is launching her 22nd birthday collection. Um, now, now Kylie Cosmetics is launching a new collection in celebration of Kylie Jenner's 22nd birthday. Now this is um, a collection that is supposed to have like a theme of money and birthdays. I have no problem with that. It's a lot. It's a rather large collection. It, it includes an eyeshadow palette, three jelly highlighters, a lipstick kit, a high gloss, a shimmer eye glaze, a loose illuminating powder, a liquid liner pen, a face face primer, and a pressed body uh, highlight. Um. I feel like a lot of people will say that the theme of money for a collection is tacky. It's a theme, guys. It's not the end of the world. <laughs> I feel like I myself get like very heated about certain themes, but like, I mean, this is an okay theme. It's fine. Um, I don't really care too much about this theme. It's decent. I will say, if you look at the eyeshadow palette, I mean, let's just talk about the eyeshadow palette. If you're gonna do money, why not do like a green eyeshadow palette, you know? A green eyeshadow palette for money combined with a few touches of pink. I mean, yes, there are a few colorful shades in here, but for the most part, I do call this palette a neutral wonderland. Um, I might just be doing a redesign because I really don't like this. Honest Sauce of Beverly Hills is launching loose powders. They are $36 each and they have five different shades. Okay, see, I think that a variety of different brands have been launching powders. I'm not gonna include them all in this video because powders are boring to me. I don't use them that much and I don't necessarily have any kind of personal liking to using a powder on my face at the moment. So yeah, I'm just not into powders. However, if you're into like baking, Still, if you're into setting your powder, I guess this is going to be a, a good option for you. But then Anastasia Beverly Hills is also launching 50 shades of their new foundation. And I thought when I first saw this picture, I thought that this wasn't Anastasia Beverly Hills, that this was another brand. Because if you look at the bottom corner of this image, the packaging does not look like Anastasia Beverly Hills, and they are selling this for $38. For $38, I know this is picky, but come on, this is $38. That is a substantial chunk of money, and for that money, I would expect to see something that looked a little bit a little bit more high-end. Maybe not luxe, because this is $38, but a little bit more high-end. This packaging genuinely looks like something you'd get at the drugstore, and I don't like that. Um, I do think that the range of shades does seem to be quite decent, and I do appreciate that. But the packaging is the only like um, is the only caveat that I have with this launch so far. I will say that it's a little bit odd. I think that they're launching powders, and yet at the same time they are um, marketing this particular foundation as liquid, dewy, skin-like, and a foundation that that does not need to be set. You know, I find that that's a little bit, I mean, it's not like a negative, it's just it's just curious that they're launching those two things so closely together. Maybe this is like a dewy foundation, but if you like set it, it'll become matte, obviously. Maybe that's what they're trying to, like, maybe that's what they're thinking. I don't know. Drufia's Place is apparently coming out with contour sticks. Um, I will say that I prefer powder contour. I definitely do not find myself preferring cream contour that much, but... I mean, I'm curious to see the shade range. Definitely am. I feel like Juvia's Place will do the shade range really well, but of course, we shall see. Also, the company E Unique Beauty is launching this La Gelateria eyeshadow palette right here. Um, I will say that the swatches look absolutely sublime. They really do. They look absolutely stunning. But the only caveat that I have with this is that if you look at Trend Mood, it appears that they're only selling this eyeshadow palette in a set with a makeup bag um, for $50, for 50 pounds. And then you can give the bag separately in four different colors for $27.99. So my question is, can you buy the palette separately or do you have to buy it in the set? Because if you have to buy it in the set, in my opinion, paying 50, 50 pounds for that 
is a little bit up there, is definitely up there, and I don't really like that. The price, in my opinion, should definitely be around $20, $30, especially for a palette that looks like this. Because if I'm being honest, a palette that has this sort of packaging and this number of shades, in my opinion, shouldn't be $50, you know what I mean? Even in a set. Because what if you don't want the bag? I don't know. I might just be spewing a whole bunch of nonsense here, but on the trend mood post, it definitely only shows the option for the palette to be sold with the set or for the uh, bag, for the makeup bag, just to be sold separately. I have no idea. Okay, so ColourPop Cosmetics decided to launch a strawberry themed collection and this is a collection that I have talked about um, a great deal on my channel uh, this week. I did a video or a tutorial inspired by the strawberry milkshake palette in the collection and then I also did a redesign of that very same palette. So those videos are in the cards if you want to check them out and you haven't done so already. However, the other uh, facets of the collection do include a blush sticks duo, a powder blush, some jelly much shadows, ultra glossy lips, and also some skincare products as well. And then the entire set can be purchased for $87. The collection itself just doesn't ring any alarms for me. That sounds bad. The collection itself doesn't necessarily make me too interested, you know? Like, it's just... It's a cute collection, but since the theme was strawberry, I expected something, I don't know, some, something else, something a little bit more fun, something a little bit different from uh, what ColourPop has been launching before, because you remember, they launched like a, another sort of like red corally themed palette before, and then this one is supposed to be red, but inside it has a lot of pink tones as well, which is fine, okay? But at the same time, I mean, I'm kind of like, like, you know, what is, what is the entire, like, look, like, what is the theme? It's strawberry, apparently, but I don't really see strawberry in the collection that much. I mean, I see red, but I don't really see much else. You know what I mean? Maybe that's me being super picky, I don't know, but I would have liked to see maybe some, like, more deep and rich strawberry red tones. Um, I think one of you was actually suggesting suggesting in the comment section of one of my videos that I did on this palette that it would have been fun to see maybe some greens in there as well, and I agree. I mean, it might have looked a little bit Christmassy, I don't know, but I mean, something about this collection, it's just not a collection that I think is really that memorable, and... I'm just not interested. Cody, which is a drugstore brand known for their iconic face powder is launching a loose face highlighter. They have three different shades. They have Snow Much Ice, Glow for Gold, and then they have a pink shade. And then the pricing is going to be at $5.96 each. So pretty um, similar to their face powder. However, I will admit, and of course this is my own bias, but whenever I think of Cody, I just think of their face powder. I don't necessarily think of them as an all-around brand. The idea of Cody is so intertwined with face powder for me. I'm not necessarily interested in trying out anything else that they have. I know that they do face powder really well and that's all I need. I don't really need any highlighters from them. Plus I already have so many highlighters so this is just gonna be a pass. I feel like so many people will be very happy to know that the new product that Fenty Beauty is launching is going to be the Pro Filter Hydrating Foundation that is perfect for normal to dry skin. I am so into this. It is in the same 50 shades as the original Pro Filter Soft Matte Foundation I'm so excited for this. I actually am. I kind of wish I wasn't on my no buy because I would love to try this out because I love a dewy finish. And I know this is supposed to be for um, normal to dry skin, but I love a dewy finish in my foundation anyway, so it would be fun to see if this um, worked on me. Maybe it wouldn't. I don't know. But so many people were talking about how it would be great to see Fenty Beauty launch a foundation that was more hydrating because a lot of people really didn't like the um, soft matte foundation because it was so matte and because it was so drying on many different people. 
but I, I really like this idea. I will say that I wish they had kept the original packaging that they had with a soft matte foundation, that beautiful, really luxurious feeling glass bottle that I loved so much. It came with a pump. I still have it. It's still in my collection, but I love that packaging. It's one of my favorites. And this is a tube. I wish it came with a pump. I really do. I would love for them to bring back the original packaging for the soft matte foundation into the Pro Filter Hydrating Foundation. That would be great. Okay, we are quickly approaching the end of this video. We have this um, palette from the brand Eloise Beauty, and this is called the New Queen Palette, and this is available for $44. It is rather large, I do admit, and I feel like some of the colors do look quite similar to each other, but I will say that this is a colorful palette that doesn't look too haphazard. I feel like there is a certain set of themes. They seem to be sticking to the purples, the blues, the pinks with like a touch of neutrals in there. So I do see some structure but at the same time I feel like this palette is a little bit too overwhelming for me. It is a little bit too large and I have so many large palettes that I feel like I'm scarred for life and I don't want to go for large palettes ever again watch me get another large palette someday <laughs> but I just don't want large palettes so this is going to be a pass because of how huge this is this has what uh 20 shades doesn't seem like a lot when you compare it to other shades or other palettes but for me at the moment this is kind of overwhelming and I believe that pretty much completes this entire video those are the different products that I wanted to mention for this week's edition of will I buy it I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it interesting thank you so much for watching and I will see you in tomorrow's video bye guys